Dream 14 Entertainment is a studio that's probably most commonly associated with the psychological horror adventure sanitarium, though older players also remember the developers' efforts in the field of the Dungeons and Dragons fantasy role-playing games. Both Ravenloft and its direct sequel, Stone Prophet, remain commendable endeavors in the genre and offer worthy challenges to those daring to face them. The geekier members of the audience without a doubt recall Dreamforge's more obscure titles, like the Roger Zelazny inspired adventure Chrono Master or the action focused RPGs like the Anvil of Dawn or Dungeon Hack, from which footage we're seeing right now. However, the company's history of exploring different ways of interactive storytelling goes much deeper than that. Hey, I'm Magic, welcome to Joints and Games. Growing Pains Established in 1990 by three friends, Christopher Straka, Thomas Holmes and James Namestka, the studio was originally known as Event Horizon Software. The small yet ambitious team has managed to release a handful of titles in cooperation with different publishers in the first part of the decade, although by the time their fourth game was out of the door and the company's publishing deal with Strategic Simulations Incorporated has expired, the management at Event Horizon felt unsatisfied and craved greater exposition for their work. As the three friends and their growing team wanted to expand into new territories, they had to lawyer up and bravely step into the twisted world of trademarks and copyrights. This is how Straka, Holmes and Namestka learned that the name Even Horizons had been already registered by a different entity and, being unable to trademark their company's current name, the trio had to come up with something new. By 1994, the situation was being addressed by James Namestka in the manual for Dungeon Hack, the first title released by the rebranded developer. We cannot trademark the name Event Horizon. We did not want any confusion with other products. We are very proud of our products and enjoy playing them ourselves. We want people to see our name and know the quality that name represents. We are committed to bringing you the very best in entertainment, hence the creation of Dreamforge. While rebranding strikes me as a maneuver that's always risky, things couldn't go differently with Event Horizon Software and one could argue that they were simply a consequence of their decision of expanding. The burning question however is, what exactly convinced Straka, Holmes and Namestka to take these risks? In order to provide an answer, we have to go back to the long gone days of the year 1993 and visit the secluded Carpathian Valley of Xarda, where ancient evil is as powerful as it is omnipresent. The Curse Utilizing the trope of an accidental and not exactly enthusiastic outsider-type protagonist who is forced to save an isolated community from a greater threat, Veil of Darkness quite interestingly combines non-linear narration and puzzle-solving with RPG-like gameplay. Given how strongly these two elements drive the experience, one could argue that Veil seems to constitute the perfect evidence supporting the earlier claim that the specialists at Even Horizon Software were always a bit torn between these two approaches to interactive storytelling, although we will never know what exactly was happening inside the developers' heads at the time. What we do know, however, is that by the standards of the year 1993, the introduction to this game was incredibly impressive. I would say it still is, given how much is being accomplished by a mere handful of barely animated images and the initial setting that can be described as almost formulaic. A cargo plane, piloted by a young American taken straight from classic adventure movies, crashes in a remote Romanian valley under mysterious and definitely not natural circumstances. The pilot is saved from the burning wreckage by two shadowy figures who then carry the unconscious daredevil to the nearby village. Upon waking up, the hero learns that he had been saved by Deidre Christoveric, the obligatorily beautiful young woman and the protagonist's immediate love interest. Soon after though, the outsider learns of a malignant curse that has been brought on the valley by the evil vampire Lord Kyrne who has been terrorizing the local population for the last couple of centuries. Willing to play the role of the hero or not, the protagonist has to find a way to defeat the malicious Nosferatu and to save the local population, as his only alternative is staying in this godforsaken valley forever. 
From that point onwards, the Valley of Xarda becomes open for the players to explore in a semi-non-linear fashion, which is actually quite impressive given the number of variables resulting from the vast gallery of characters that can be interacted with and subplots that can be followed. It is through exploration that the players get to learn just how rich and intriguing the portrait world turns out to be. While the initial setting focusing on the accidental hero dealing with an ancient vampire curse is nothing short of one big cliché, the secluded microcosm of Xarda is positively amazing, occasionally confusing and not always exactly consistent nor compliant with its own rules, but positively amazing nonetheless. The curse of the evil Karn runs deep and the valley is a truly perilous place. Even though the map contains a handful of relatively safe locations inhabited by rather outspoken NPCs, the majority of places visited in Veil of Darkness present numerous hazards. The dead are rising from their graves, ancient artifacts await to be used for the final time, crazed wolves roam the fields, and even the inhabitants of the local villages and settlements cannot be always trusted as madness and desperation plague those who live in constant fear. Even the setting itself seems to be playing an important role in this theater of dread, with its dense forests, treacherous swamps, maze-like catacombs and high mountains surrounding the valley and seemingly preventing any means of escape, Xarda is both vast and limiting, in consequence providing the players with an environment that's both inspiring spontaneous exploration and quite effective at directing their attention throughout the plot. And what a plot that is! The story is as dark as night before the dawn and it seems as if everyone in this valley, well, almost everyone, is either hiding a horrible secret or is involved in some suspicious activities. The harsh reality of Xarda has a strong tendency of getting really grim and often the protagonist's no-nonsense attitude is the only brighter counterpoint in the ocean of all-encompassing gloom. The plot of Veil of Darkness features more or less accurate, albeit copious, references to Central European and Slavonic old tales, folklore and bestiary, and it often feels like the game's authors, mainly Chris Straka and Thomas Holmes, who was also the game's lead programmer, have decided to approach their inspiration in an almost postmodernistic way. Everything feels unique, unrepeatable and last of its kind. As if the Valley of Xarda was the last place on earth where things like vampire curses still have to be dealt with. Bloody Roots While Veil of Darkness offers a fair share of challenges demanding quick neutralization of threats in the vein of action RPGs, the game also puts a great emphasis on the dialogues and item-based puzzle elements of gameplay, and with the visible shift towards the latter group of features, even Horizon's game is quite a rare specimen, almost unprecedented, one would like to argue. However, in order to fully understand the innovative brilliance of this design, it is not only important to remember that we are talking about a game from 1993, but it is also crucial to know the history of Event Horizon software just a little bit more. See? That seemingly pointless introduction from earlier on wasn't completely pointless after all. As I was digging deeper into the history of the studio, the more was I realizing that the core concept behind Veil of Darkness is something that the people at Event Horizon were perfecting from the very start. Their first release, an action RPG, Dark Spire, has been published in 1990 by Electronic Zoo and was following the adventures of a female or male champion braving a treacherous, randomly generated dungeon filled with both epic loot and bloodthirsty monsters. The game featured real-time combat, deteriorating weapons and armors, a system of auxiliary spells, as well as ominous talking skulls acting as tooltips and tutorials although also worth noting is Dark Spire's surprisingly utilitarian user interface that allowed for relatively pain-free interaction with the portrait world. With a singular, albeit almost fatal, design flow resulting in extremely limited options of saving the game's state and its vertigo-inducing camera work, Dark Spire is quite unplayable by today's standards, although it remains a worthy first attempt on the developer's side.
especially that Event Horizon's next game, Dusk of the Gods, released by Interstell Corporation in 1991, has vastly improved on pretty much all aspects of the previous title. Taking inspiration from Norse mythology, Dusk tells the story of the champion of Odin in the days of Nearing Ragnarok. Even though combat plays a huge role in the overall experience, Dusk of the Gods also introduces a complex dialogue system and the numerous NPCs, adversaries and characters encountered during the adventure are usually quite talkative. Gone are the randomly generated dungeons from Darkspire and instead a more guided experience is being offered and exteriors are added. Graphics are still quite simplistic, although thanks to the new color palette and an isometric perspective, the portrait events are much more understandable. Also, the writing of Dusk of the Gods is significantly better than in Event Horizon's previous game and it is easily noticeable that stuff has been researched and that the authors know what the hell they're talking about. Finally, there is the summoning. Published in 1992 by Strategic Simulations Incorporated for MS-DOS and PC-98, the game is a sequel to Darkspire, however this time around the people at Event Horizon have decided to take advantage of the experience they've gained during the development of Dusk of the Gods. Despite action being absolutely present and accounted for, the title is noticeably dialogue heavy and the number of puzzles requiring the proper use of inventory items is almost staggering at times. The writing has been greatly improved, and while the summoning uses a very cliché starting point, the actual narrative content is captivating and interestingly plays on some of the most common tropes. And then there are the artworks and the interface, which, in case of games by Event Horizon, should be considered as elements that somewhat complement each other. I have to say that I have always been a great fan of the works by Jane Yeager and Frank Shorter and I would wager that The Summoning is the first title where their unique style gets an opportunity to shine. All in all, The Summoning is an adventure worth partaking in and if there is one flow I can think of is the generic fantasy setting of the whole endeavor. And this is where Veil of Darkness comes back into the equation as one year after The Summoning, even Horizon finally managed to get their concept across. The tale of the American pilot trapped in a Carpathian valley is the closest that Namestka, Holmes and Straka ever got to realize their particular idea for gameplay and, in my opinion at least, they got pretty damn close. What's insane is that Veil of Darkness puts the whole balance between storytelling and action on its head. There is more talking than fighting and I love it. But we're only starting here. First of all, while the game's initial setting might appear as cliché, the actual story and its execution are anything but, especially by the standards of 1993. Sure, in the age of The Witcher and Undertale, the twists of the plot and subtle plays on common tropes offered by Veil of Darkness are probably nothing impressive, but, once again, they sure had their unique flavor in 1993. This leads us to the game's atmosphere, really great, thick with terror, achieved partially by the writing, partially by the ominous music, but mostly by the great, truly amazing artworks provided by Jane Yeager and Frank Schurter. Artworks that with time have become somewhat of a staple of RPG games developed by Dreamforge Entertainment. The graphics of Veil of Darkness may appear as a bit crude at times and certain stylistic decisions make the Valley of Xarda look like some farming area from the United States, but the feel of pixelated dread is almost oozing through the screen and the character portraits do a great job at showing all the colorful NPCs encountered throughout the adventure. Also, it is worth emphasizing that since Veil of Darkness does not feature a traditional fantasy setting, the visuals of the game are actually somewhat original. I mean, how often do we get to see such riveting scenes as this one. While this is not much of a big deal, one should note that Veil of Darkness doesn't feature a possibility of creating one's own character and this can be seen as both a good and a bad thing. Good, because a singular protagonist has allowed the artist to include different facial expressions conveying a whole range of emotions of the character. On the other hand, it's a bad thing honestly, as the majority of the developer's other titles feature numerous character portraits to choose from. And I mean just look at them, some of them practically write their own stories. 
What's also worth mentioning is the user interface, being somewhat of a natural evolution of the ideas from previous releases by Event Horizon and centering on a system of dragging and dropping items, the UI of Veil of Darkness does quite a great job at making the game surprisingly accessible even today. Really, it just makes all the puzzle solving and monster killing easy. The players are able to clearly see what items their character is carrying, what statuses are being at play and what has to be done in order to move the story forward. All the critical information is exactly where one would expect it to be. While it is sometimes still necessary to manually input conversation topics, the whole process is surprisingly streamlined for 1993. It seems in fact that the developers were quite proud of their achievement in this regard as the game's creative designer, Chris Straka, even talks about the UI in Vale's thick, nerdy handbook saying, among other things, as a matter of fact, I hope just about anyone could play the game without ever reading a line from this manual. Of course, as in case of pretty much every game, there are some flaws here and there, although nothing I would call exactly game-breaking. In fact, the contracted playtesters have done a great job, as despite the numerous subplots and the open setting, Veil is really solid and virtually impossible to break. Or maybe not. You can actually check it out for yourself, as the title has become abandoned where years ago, and it is possible to download Veil from numerous sites absolutely for free. Even by the standards of 1993, there is definitely space for improvement in terms of overall animation. While the artworks are great, a few additional frames here and there would help a lot. The length of the game can be somewhat disputable as well, as it is possible to clock the whole adventure in less than 10 hours, which compared to other RPG games, is not exactly astonishing. Finally, for an action RPG game, there is not that much action when you think about it. The great majority of combat can be outright avoided, and killing enemies does not provide experience points, so at times simply maneuvering between all the hulking beasts is the easier thing to do. As for me, however, I like the game as it is, and I can absolutely see just how Veil of Darkness made the management of Even Horizon think that their time for greatness has come. The Last Rites And it indeed has. The release of Veil of Darkness has cemented Event Horizon's reputation as specialists in the trade and the majority of the team's games released under the Dreamforge Entertainment banner were nothing short of impressive. The road to greatness leads through brave experimentation and exploration of new possibilities and Event Horizon's last release constitutes a great recollection of the open minds of its creators.